Hello, welcome to the course PH6B13E Computational Physics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Core Python Programming by R. Nageshwar Rao. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 1, Introduction to Python Programming. In today's class, we will discuss about uh, two important data types in Python, which are very specific to Python. One is tuple and the other one is dictionary. Tuple is an ordered collection of distinct objects which are immutable. So these are defined uh, using a pair of normal brackets. Uh, just like list, the elements of a tuple could be similar or uh, distinct. So here I have uh, a tuple x equal to 1, 2, 3.0 and a. First two elements are integers, third one is a float and last one is a, a string. And uh, tuples are very similar to list. The only difference is that uh, list is mutable where you can change the values of the elements. Here it, it is immutable. You cannot change the values. So you can create a tuple directly by defining the elements within a pair of normal brackets or you can first define a list then convert that into a tuple using the keyword tuple. So x is initially defined as a list when I say x equal to tuple x, list x is converted into tuple x. Now one thing you have to particularly keep in mind is that whenever you define a tuple with a single element, the element should be followed by a comma. Otherwise what happens that Python will treat it as a string. So let's look at an example. Suppose I have a single element tuple 2 equal to a. So A is the only element. So in such cases, that element should be followed by a comma. So now when you type, when you want to know the type, when you uh, when you press type tube, you get uh, the data type as tuple. On the other hand, if you define this without the comma, and when you want to find the type, you will get the result like this class str, which means for Python, this is a string. So you should be careful about single element tuples. Just like list, tuple also supports all the indexing operations, including slicing. Uh, if you're following the guidebook by Ina Schusser, uh, there is a mistake in that book. There it mentioned that a tuple doesn't support indexing, but in fact, uh, tuple supports indexing. Okay. So if you have a tuple x equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, each of the element is identified with the corresponding index. And the first element always has the zeroth index, so you can call it as the zeroth element, first element, second element, third element, etc. And you can access the element using the corresponding index. So when I say x, x of 0, the first element is fetched here. Similarly, uh, if you want to access the last element, you can use x of minus 1 because each element has a normal indexing as well as the, the negative index. Okay. Similarly, you can extract a part of the tuple using the slicing operation. So when I say x of 0, uh, colon 3, uh, it extract the part of the tuple starting with the 0th element all the way to 3 minus 1, which is the second element. So, zeroth element, first element, second element. So the result is going to be tuple with elements 1, 2, 3. Similarly, when you say x bracket 3 colon, so here if you don't mention anything, it means that by default the, uh, the ending element is the last element. So it starts from the third element which is 4 all the way to last element which is 5. So you get the answer tuple 4 comma 5. As I said earlier, the main difference between tuple and uh, list is that tuple is Im immutable. You cannot change the value. So suppose you have tuple with elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if you want to change the value of the first element from uh, 1 to some other value. So if you say x of 0 equal to a, then this will give you an error in the, in the stack trace because uh, you cannot change the value of a, a tuple. So whenever you want to define a sequence whose values are permanent, like you want to define a sequence of other numbers or 
you want to define a sequence of roll numbers. So in such cases, it is better to define that sequence as a tuple rather than a, a list because inadvertently, if you perform some operation and that changes the value of the element, then if it is a, a, a list type, then that will lead to problem. On the other hand, if you if you define it as a tuple, all such uh, inadvertent errors can be avoided. Okay, so that's one particular use of tuple. Now the second data type which is uh, uh, particular to Python is dictionary. Dictionary is a mutable associative array enclosed by a set of curly braces. Each element in a dictionary consists of two parts, key part and value part. So a dictionary contains a number of such key value pairs in the following format. So it has a, a pair of curly braces and just like the set, instead of that each element is a pair of key and value. So x equal to key one, uh, colon value one. So key and value are separated by a colon and each individual elements are separated by comma as usual. So key one, colon value one, comma, key two, colon value two, comma, key three, Value so just like tuple, you can uh, create uh, a dictionary directly using this format or you can convert uh, uh, a sequence into a dictionary. Okay. So here I am defining a dictionary X with the following elements. So I have a pair of curly braces instead that I have first element which is CP colon IJK. So CP is the key, IJK is the value. The second element I have age colon 20. So age is the key, 20 is the value. Then I have uh, 10 comma 20 colon and data. So uh, either the all the elements could be of same uh, data type or it could be different. So here in the first case I have two strings. In the second case I have a string and an integer. In the third case I have a data pair. Okay, so you can you can squeeze all different uh, data types into a single sequence and call that as a dictionary. Now the second type, you can first define a list. So we are familiar with the list with individual elements. You can also define a list with a data pairs. So this is a list. And using the keyword DICT, dict, I can convert that into a dictionary. So when I print X now, it will be printed as a dictionary. Now the significance of the key here is that it works like an index. So in the case of a list or set, you have index corresponding to each element, right? So in the case of dictionary, for each element, the key is like an index, which means you can access a particular element or you can access a particular value using its corresponding key. So that's the role played by key here. So suppose I have a dictionary x equal to a colon 1 comma b colon 2 comma c colon 3. Now suppose I want to access value 3. So I can do that using the corresponding key. Key 3 is c. So when I say x of c or print x of c the corresponding value will be printed so one thing you have to remember is that you can access a value using the key the other way is not possible you cannot access the key using the corresponding value so if you say x of 3 right uh, what you are intending to do is you want to access the corresponding key which is c but this is not supported by Python. So when you write X of 3, you will get an error message. So always a value can be accessed by a key. On the other hand, a key cannot be fetched by the corresponding value. Now if you have a dictionary, you want to list out all the elements of the keys, then you can use the keyword keys. So X dot keys, all the keys will be listed here. Similarly, x dot values will fetch you all the values. So here, it's a defined in a peculiar way, uh, but uh, from a utility point of view, it makes more sense to 
uh, fetch all the keys in, in the form of a list. In that case, you can say list x comma keys. So all the key elements will be will be printed as a list here. Similarly, when you say list x dot values, all the values elements are printed as a list. You can also create a dictionary by zipping two list or tuple. Zipping means combine. So suppose you have two list sequence one and sequence two. So sequence one is A, B, C, sequence two is one, two, three. Now when I say sequence three equal to dict zip sequence one, sequence two. So Python knows that it has to zip sequence one and sequence two. So it will combine these two elements moment it sees the keyword dict, it knows that it needs to zip these two sequences in the form of a dictionary. So when I say print sequence 3, it will combine these two elements in the form of a dictionary. So your output is going to be a colon 1 comma b colon 2 comma c colon 3. Now, if you want to remove a particular element from a dictionary, you can use the function del, D-E-L. So once again, you will remove a particular element using the corresponding key. Okay. So when I say del x of A, the element corresponding to key A will be removed. So here the element corresponding to key A is the first element. So the entire key value pair will be removed. So when you print x now, it will print only the remaining values. That is b colon 2 comma c colon 3. Okay. You can also check the presence of an element using the, the key. For example, if you take the same dictionary x equal to a1, b2, c3. Now, if you put a conditional expression if a in x, so it's asking the question whether key A is part of the dictionary X. If the answer is yes, then that will give you a Boolean answer, which is true. So if the answer is true, you can perform certain operation. If the answer is false, you can execute another set of expressions. So you can also use it in a conditional expression. You can also combine two dictionaries just like you combine two strings using the plus operation. There, uh, if you recall, that was the, that was not the mathematical addition that is known as concatenation. Here also, you can do that kind of a, a combination using the keyword update. So suppose you have two dictionaries D and DD. So D has elements apple one, oranges three, pears two. And DD has elements pears 4, grapes 5, lemon 6. Okay. So when you say D dot update DD, it means you are updating the elements of dictionary D with the elements of dictionary DD. Now one thing you have to remember is that always Python goes by the key value. Okay. The key element. Okay. It doesn't access the, uh, the particular element using the values. So always the reference goes to key. Now here in the case of uh, dictionary D, the last element has the key peers. In the case of second dictionary, the first element also has the key peers. Okay. So for Python, these two are similar elements. So whenever Python encounters two similar elements, what it does is it will take into account only the latest value. So here we are updating D with DD. So PS2 is the old value. PS4 is the latest value. So Python will consider only the latest value. In other words, the previous value is overridden by the latest value. So when you, when you now print D, remember this is the updated D. So whenever you use print statement, only the latest result will be printed. So here you are going to get the result apple 1, orange 3, 
instead of PS2, it is updated by PS4. So the third element is PS4 followed by the remaining elements of DD, Grips 5 and Element 6. So this is how you combine the elements of two uh, dictionaries. Okay. So these are some of the basic operations uh, with uh, tuple and dictionary and these are very specific to Python programming language and uh, uh, it's good you get familiarized with all the basic tools because somewhere in your, in your programming you may be using uh, one of these. Okay. So that's for today. In the next class, we will talk about one of the most important operations in any programming language that is the file operations. So thank you.